The year 2016, Siberia. Due to a sudden outbreak of the Siberian plague, a child died, dozens of people, and around a thousand reindeer got infected. The spread of deadly bacteria was triggered by heat. An abnormal temperature melted the permafrost, revealing the infected carcass of a reindeer that had been lying there for 75 years. But scientists claim that the Siberian plague is not the scariest thing hidden on our planet. Danger awaits us everywhere, in glaciers, the soil beneath our feet, and even the ocean water. In 2002, microbiologist Mia Breitbart and Forrest Rover from the University of South Florida proved that 200 liters of seawater contain over 5,000 unknown viruses, and no one knows when they might turn lethal, like in the case of COVID-19. After all, coronaviruses were discovered back in the 1960s, and they were considered dangerous only to birds and animals. It took 50 years for one of them to cause the most extensive pandemic of the 21st century. Fortunately, we've found ways to defeat this plague. Yet, scientists claim that a new disaster, Epidemic X, is inevitable. Where could it come from? And what if the pandemic has already begun? Researchers suggest that the next pandemic might not be caused by a virus, but by bacteria. Lately, we're seeing more and more dangerous strains emerging. Take, for instance, the so-called nightmare bacteria, CPE. Its main threat lies in being a superbug that no known antibiotic can kill. Superbugs are practically immortal. To survive harsh environmental conditions, they go into a dormant state, forming layers of protective armor around themselves. Thus, a dormant bacterium can survive without nutrients, unaffected by heat, cold, or antibiotics for centuries. It seems like we're utterly powerless against them. According to the forecasts of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the U.S., by 2050, CPE will kill more people than cancer. These infections mainly arise in hospitals, infecting patients with impaired immune systems. And since antibiotics don't work against superbugs, CPE can spread throughout the body, leading to sepsis, organ failure, and death. Is this virus sex that will wipe out humanity? Don't panic, I've got some good news for you. Senior scientist at the Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security, Dr. Amesh Adalja, claims that although these bacteria are horrifying, they only spread in medical facilities. You're very unlikely to catch it at the supermarket or on the subway. This means CPE is not disease X, capable of rapidly spreading worldwide and exterminating half of humanity. But viruses, on the other hand, have much better chances. Especially since scientists have recently made a shocking discovery in this field. Did you know that viruses have hands and feet? How about that for a mind-blowing revelation? In 2019, scientists collected soil samples from the Harvard forest and found giant viruses measuring up to 635 nanometers in width. Just to put things in perspective, the diameter of the common flu virus is only about 80 to 120 nanometers. In just a few handfuls of soil, researchers discovered a remarkable variety of giant viruses taking on, according to them, previously unimaginable forms and appearances. For example, the giant Mimi virus was actually discovered back in 1992, but it was mistakenly identified as a bacterium, Bradfordocus, all because it was huge. The particles of the Mimi virus measured 750 nanometers in length. But how dangerous are these giant viruses? To survive, these things must penetrate the host cell and create what's called a viral factory to produce new viruses. 
The ones that can affect the most cells with its DNA will evolve the fastest. Some giant viruses have super tools for this job. For instance, the Tupan virus, discovered in Brazil, ejects its DNA through what's known as Stargate. It's located on the virus's surface and remains closed for most of its life cycle. But once inside the host cell, each gate leg unzips, allowing the viral genetic material to slip through the newly formed opening. This method helps the virus infect cells very quickly. Despite this, until recently, it was believed that these giants were safe for humans as they usually infect specific types of prokaryotes such as bacteria and archaea rather than animals or humans. And only recently have researchers learned that smaller viruses can infect large viruses. Therefore, if a giant virus takes on a dangerous passenger, it could easily become deadly. According to scientists' estimates, there are 10 nonillion viruses on our planet. They're everywhere, in the air, water, and right under our feet. We can peacefully coexist with most of them. But as COVID showed, sudden outbreaks of viruses that used to be harmless to us are quite possible. When could this happen again? It seems this question was answered by the largest known giant virus discovered by scientists, Pithovirus sibiricum, buried in the Siberian permafrost. Its width reached 1,500 nanometers, which is more than 10 times larger than COVID-19. Scientists discovered it in 2014 during the thawing of the ice and were shocked to find out that a 30,000-year-old virus was still alive. To better understand the risks associated with frozen viruses, Jean-Michel Claveret, a professor of genomics and bioinformatics at Aix-Marseille University, introduced this ancient virus into cultured cells and learned that it hadn't lost its ability to infect them. Yikes, I can't even imagine what other monsters our glaciers might be hiding. The year 1997, Seward, Alaska. Scientists conducted an excavation of the mummified remains of a woman preserved in permafrost for three centuries. During their research, they discovered that her lung tissue contained the genomic material of the strain responsible for the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. It was the influenza A virus. It enters the body through the nose, mouth, or eyes, infecting the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract, eventually progressing into dangerous pneumonia. According to researchers' estimates, around 50 million people died from the Spanish flu between 1918 and 1919. Just imagine what this virus could do now if it breaks free from under the permafrost. If you ask me, Scientists shouldn't rush this process. Let the ancient ice remain ice for as long as possible, trapping all the contagion within it. However, convincing scientists will be much easier than addressing global warming, which will eventually unleash this Pandora's box anyway. At the same time, Dr. Andre Speck, associate professor at the Washington University School of Medicine, claims that the pandemic has already begun. And while we're trying to defeat giant viruses and bacteria, a tiny deadly enemy might already be infiltrating our bodies. We're not talking about a virus cooked up in secret labs here, although Conspiracy theorists would probably love that theory. What I'm talking about is fungus. Fungal infections are extremely dangerous and hard to diagnose and treat. Some doctors believe that the fungal pandemic began with the emergence of Candida auris, a species discovered in Asia in 2009. But it gained popularity during the COVID pandemic Back then, it quickly spread in hospitals, infecting patients weakened by the coronavirus. 
Candida auris can affect the bloodstream and nervous system, as well as most organs, including the brain and heart. Yet, there exists a much scarier fungus. Moreover, we may have all been infected by it for a long time. Remember the last time you saw black mold, say, in the bathroom? That's a fungus called Aspergillus. Its high adaptability allows it to survive in both dry and moist environments. It's also resistant to low and high temperatures. What's really scary about this thing is that it's a very common mold found abundantly in nature and present in large quantities in every corner of the world. For humans, it's harmless. As long as you don't accidentally inhale it, Aspergillus enters the body through the lungs and then it gets into the bloodstream. If your immune system is in good shape, it'll restrain the infection. However, a weakened immune system or chronic lung disease allows Aspergillus to develop into severe pneumonia and even spread throughout the body. But can fungi trigger a deadly pandemic? Dr. John Perfect, chief of the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Duke University School of Medicine, has been studying fungal infections for decades. The scientist warns that some strains of fungi are already becoming resistant to antifungal medications. So, it seems that bacteria, viruses, and fungi, like intelligent organisms, are learning to bypass our defense methods and becoming increasingly invulnerable. Where could this lead us? The worst of all possible scenarios would be a multi-pronged attack on our bodies. Just imagine a flu virus that weakens our immune system. Then mold comes into play. It enters the lungs and causes pneumonia. You have no choice but to go to the hospital, where you're greeted by a superbug against which the brightest minds haven't found any medication yet. Poor human bodies definitely won't withstand such a vicious attack. What do you think could trigger the next global pandemic.